Hi, this will be a short talk on the issue of supporting weight at the piano, clarifying what it really means to connect the hand and the arm whilst playing. Now, to begin with, I'd like to break down two very common tendencies which can get in the way of freedom of technique. Now, the first one, very commonly spoken of, and it's very common amongst beginners particularly, we, we might tend to hold the weight of the arm very much from the shoulder to bring the hand to the piano, and now try to move nothing but the fingers while holding everything else. Feels like we get more control by that, but the problem is, by having everything tight here, it's actually the fingers that suffer, because the tendons that run down through the wrist can't move freely when the arm is tight. So the fingers themselves actually have the problem. So to solve that, the most common antidote that we have is this idea we would use the weight of the arm and drop the full weight of the arm onto each finger. Now, this is fine as an exercise if I start with this. Just by default, because I'm moving the arm, I'm necessarily going to be freer from that alone compared to this tight arm with only the fingers moving. Now, the problem with this, uh, this is much less spoken of, however, the problem with this, if we take it too literally, as we bring that into the playing in general, if I go to legato, firstly, say, if I have this idea, I've got to feel the weight of my arm resting into the hand, it might look something like this, possibly. Uh, now, what really works is going to look like this. As you can see, that was much lighter. I certainly wasn't trying to rest the full weight of my arm on each finger. So it can really be a bit of an obstacle if we go too far with that kind of thing. If I show a slightly longer passage as well, slightly extended. Now, I couldn't possibly do that if my arms were tight and completely held back in the shoulder. There's no way that would get off the ground, no chance at all. However, it also wouldn't work if I was trying to rest full weight into each finger. So we need a much more sophisticated model we need to understand an idea of two-ended balance and look at the distribution from both ends. Now, to give an idea of this, uh, a good model you can use to understand it would be if I take a broom and I hold that out horizontally. Now, it's not a very heavy thing. If I held it this way, I could do that all day. If I hold it out horizontally, however, it's a bit like the way we support the arm at the piano. When you have something that's horizontal, if it's only stabilised at one end, to, to support that against gravity is actually pretty hard work. Now, with this broom, it's not too heavy. I could probably hold it for a while still. But imagine if you had a heavy sword, for example. That would get incredibly tiring really quickly. So, just changing the angle to show, ideally, grab a broom for yourself. You can have, say, a golf club or something. You need some kind of long lever you can hold out horizontally in front of yourself. And uh, due to the relationship to gravity, specifically when it's horizontal, you can have something that's not terribly heavy, but to sustain this at this angle, you really do need quite a big balancing force, surprisingly big, relative to the actual weight of the broom, when it's a one-ended support. However, touch the far end down, and I now have a two-ended support. Now, by the way, uh, if I had a really heavy sword, something that was actually very heavy, the same premise would still apply. I'd be working even harder still to hold it out at a one-ended support, go to a two-ended support, and yeah, it would be a little bit heavier at the far end. But still, relatively speaking, you'd have a very small force at both ends to stabilise. So I believe the mistake a lot of the time we can make at the piano, when we have this idea we must rest the weight of the arm into the hand, it becomes we try to make this end heavy. So see, if I just touch it down, all the effort vanishes. Hardly anything at both ends now, almost nothing. If I have the idea I'm transferring the stabilisation to the opposite end, I might start trying to make that end heavy. Now, instead of freeing myself, I'm working harder at this end too. So it's so important to understand this, that the way to create easy stabilisation shared between two points is not to try to be heavy at the far end. All we have to do is just touch down gently and notice how easy it becomes at both ends. That's the nature of easy two-ended support. So, bringing this back to the keyboard now, I hope that's clear that in a two-ended support mechanism, there's certainly no need to be heavy at the one end. If we go about it the right way, we can strip away the efforts at both ends through precision, not through this sort of general sense of weighing in on the hand. So, going back through what we said originally, the first problem, remember, was basically a one-ended support at the shoulder, come to the piano, don't properly support, pipe the fingers in, 
we're working too hard up here, that's not good. We're acting like it's a one-ended support, even though the hand is on the piano, we're not making the most of it. So it makes perfect sense, the response to that, if we were to think in terms of the weight of the arm, freeing it, doing this kind of thing. That's a very sensible way to respond as an exercise. We're learning to free everything, rather than have everything held tightly, we're getting it moving, everything is nice and loose. But we don't then need to say, we have to make sure the full weight of the arm rests on every finger when we play for real, because it's simply not true. Of course, if I play very quietly when I do this, there's no way I could be resting the full weight of the arm on each finger. So does that mean my shoulder's overworking if I'm not resting the weight of the arm on the hand? No, because all you have to do is touch something. And if you exploit that the right way, that's enough to take most of the work off the shoulder. Literally just touching something, honestly. So I'll show you a couple of exercises that you can use to try and sense what it's like to be truly free with minimal weight down. Now, you probably won't get this easily straight away, but if you start one end of support, just touch the thumb and literally just touch it, nothing more. And then see, can you relax the shoulder? Can you take away most of the work? Just do that touch alone. It's a bit like when we took the broom, put one end down. If we really kind of exploit what's possible, literally just that touch alone can be enough to take away most of the effort. Now, probably that's very hard to get straight away. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a feedback loop. So we'll start off, you touch it. What you're going to do is waggle the fingers like this while the thumb touches. And you're going to try and feel there's a stabilisation in the thumb, stabilisation in the shoulder, and everything in the middle should be as free as possible. Now initially, if you're not creating a good enough contact with the thumb, it may be this is all a bit locked up basically. So you won't feel any real response coming back here. That's going to be a bit kind of stuck. So for starters, if we now start to just do a bit of weight instead, let's just relax a bit more into that. Probably for a lot of people, this will be a lot freer. And you'll start to feel a bit more coming back through now. Through just kind of relaxing into the hand, there should be a bit more response. Again, the problem is that this is not the most efficient. This is just starting off, learning to strip away some of the efforts. So now we should go back to just basically touching the thumb again, waggle those fingers. And if you're getting a really good efficient balance where you're truly free, what you'll see is that the arm should wobble massively in response to those fingers. You can see that very clearly, I think, on the video probably. My, my arm is just wobbling away. As the fingers waggle, the arm is responsive. If it's held, if it's not supported, it will get stuck. If it's too heavy, basically the same effect. If you weigh onto it, there's no response, or at least you've partially blocked the response. What we're looking for is an enormous sense of response, and that doesn't work if you're heavy. You have to be able to receive it back up the arm through a kind of suspension, through these two points of contact, and basically just being as free as possible in between those two points. Now, just to apply this a little bit more on the keyboard as well, a good trick, if we really want to connect the hand and the arm, a good trick is to make sure the arm doesn't rest down on the hand. We've got to give it something else to do. So if you go sideways instead, and try and always be going sideways, this is essentially how you can avoid weighing onto the hand. But we still have a point of contact, because the fingers take the keys clearly while the arm goes sideways. So again, this should be enough. If we use it well, we can free the shoulder just through having a key pinned to the bottom. Now, if the arm tries to weigh on the fingers, very often we get stuck. We have these individual movements, one at a time, without the fluidity. So it's in a way they're working against each other. The arm is going sideways, the fingers going into the keys. On the surface, they're working against each other. But this is a really kind of happy medium between them. The fingers are free to move the keys. And because the arm is doing something else, it's going round in these kind of circles. The fingers can do that without jamming up. So here we get the best of everything here. We don't have to feel heavy in the slightest. The fingers can act with precision because there's no heaviness. The arm is totally free because the fingers are creating a point of connection. And we have that suspension between the fingers and the keys, the shoulder supporting some of the weight of the arm, but it's shared. It's not one or the other. They're both doing what they need to do, giving us that kind of suspension. And that's the true connection between hand and arm. Of course, we can do kind of tenuto, we can do this kind of stuff in real playing sometimes, but the vast majority of playing in legato, the true connection of the hand and the arm 
is based on the arm creating sideways motions, the fingers stroking the keys, and that's how we blend these things together, the hand-arm connection.